Ladies and gentlemen, let's right game into the com video get your GPU news here. That's right. We have an entire video dedicated to the technology of graphics cards. We're going to start out with AMD because yet more shipments of their upcoming Polaris architecture have been spotted. And we'll go more into what that means and what you could potentially take away from that. And then we're going to head on over to Camp NVIDIA versus Samsung. As you're probably aware, the two companies have not been particularly friendly with one another, and that's to say the least, and they've been basically swiping each other with um, great malice across the courtroom. So we'll go into the latest events in just a moment with them. But as I mentioned, first up, the Polaris Saga. So I don't think I'm required to tell you that Polaris is the latest graphics card, well, the upcoming graphics card from AMD, which of course will succeed the 300 range, which is currently doing the rounds in your stores, or indeed the Fury series. We know several things about it, including it's going to be based on a new FinFET process, 14NM is probable, and it's going to offer incredible performance per watt. In fact, it's gonna be rather astounding based upon what AMD have shown off to the press. It's actually fair to say that the improvements in terms of a power efficiency are probably some of the best we've ever seen in a GPU. And that's pretty impressive considering how long GPUs have been on the store shelves. It could well be a very, very monumental leap. So, so far AMD have unveiled two 14NM FinFET Polaris GPUs. Um, they're codenamed Polaris 11 and 10. Unfortunately, we don't know any details about the actual specifications of them, other than one of them is tiny, at least comparatively. It's around the same size as, let's say, AMD's Cape Verde, which is about 123mm. We're, of course, referring to the actual processor itself, the GPU, not the entire PCB here, just, you know, so we're on the same page. But... Some of you may be aware of the website Zuba, that's Z-A-U-B-A. -A. Now, a lot of shipments are often spotted here as they go from uh, Canada or whatever other originating country through to their destination. Now, interestingly, we have one that's popped up from Canada, which of course in this case is AMD, and its date was the 1st of February 2016. Its description was pretty pretty simple. Printed circuit board assembly video graphics card PN 102 C99398-00 FOC. Now the price is kind of expensive because it works out to be about 1700 you um 1700, which is quite expensive. How much more expensive? Well, to give you an indication, to give you a rough idea, the Hawaii graphics cards, also from AMD, were literally 33% of this price. That's quite a pricing discrepancy, to say the least. Now, obviously, this is probably not a final indication of what the actual cards are going to be worth, it could be an indication of a tri of a dual GPU, it's potentially possible, but there are multiple ways you could take this. Now, FOC, most likely that stands for full operational capacity, that's what the folks over at 3D Center believe, um, and it makes sense given what we're hearing regarding the timelines. Obviously, the GPUs supposedly are gonna be released mid this year. What does it mean? Well, it means, well, obviously you can't go to Amazon and order the graphics card now, but what it means is that AMD are getting ever closer to the final production silicon. In other words, it's a good thing for us as customers. It means that they are testing them, it means that the boards are coming along quite nicely, and it means that they're probably getting a lot happier with the final production silicon. And it also means that they're probably starting to send out test boards and they're starting to send them out to vendors and all of the other jazz that... Because you've got to remember that a lot of these shipments, from what we see and for what actually happens in reality, we probably only see a small portion of it. In reality, there's always, you know, those rumours that we miss. And we like to think that we get everything, but reality is that 
sometimes things slip through the cracks or are done super secretly or what have you, and therefore they don't ever get picked up. I'm really looking forward to this, I must admit. And we've been seeing production silicon or silicon being shipped out for some time now. However, it's probable that the versions that were shown to journalists late last year is now kind of close to the versions that are being shipped out. So it's obviously a good thing. And the real, the real beauty of this and the reason that I'm going on so much about the journalistic samples that were uh, shown off at the CS is quite simple. It was shown live working, and that is really paramount, because when you start seeing closed booths, and you start seeing, you know, we're announcing something, and then something on screen happens to show what is being discussed, but you can't see the production, you can't see the actual hardware running it, there's a good chance that it's a mock-up. It's like, just for the sake of argument, it could be, let's say NVIDIA, they could be running two GTX 980s in SLI, and it could be the equivalent of what they predict their hardware could be able to achieve. AMD have actually shown live demonstrations of their hardware. It's not final by any stretch of the imagination, but they're getting closer. So it's kind of cool. Speaking of NVIDIA, NVIDIA versus the world. So typically... I find most legal proceedings kind of boring to cover. I'm actually kind of interested in law in my own time, but they usually make for kind of dry or uninteresting videos. However, one that has been in the news a lot, and one that's quite pertinent to tech as a whole, is NVIDIA versus basically everyone and their mother. So essentially, back in 1999, NVIDIA released the first GPU to the market. Now, for those of you who are not too familiar with the history of graphics cards, beforehand there were other 3D GPUs, uh, graphics cards, for example, the Voodoo cards. However, they did not handle certain things on the actual hardware themselves. Instead, it was software. It was done on the CPU. So, triangle and lighting setup was all down to the CPU, NVIDIA changed this by effectively putting all of that stuff on the GPU, alleviating the CPU from doing the work. Now, here's the problem, um, morally and technically. So technically they were first to the market, however, it's arguable others were very close behind. In other words, it's a situation from my mind, where it wasn't like NVIDIA released it, then let's say a year and a half later, ATI and all of the other companies jumped on the bandwagon. No, they were all rushing to work on the same technology because they all knew where the where the chips were falling. Apart from 3DFX, who unfortunately omitted it from the Voodoo 4 and 5 architectures, which is a slightly different topic. But, since then, NVIDIA have essentially said that they own the GPU. Now, this cl this claim is quite important because it filed back in September of 2014 a, a lawsuit against both Samsung and Qualcomm. Why? They said that those two companies in question infringed on their patent on the GPU. Now, unfortunately, you can imagine it didn't go so well, and basically NVIDIA lost the core battle. It's a long, lengthy saga that's gone back between the two companies. Um, some of the patents were thrown out, and NVIDIA are um, appealing some. But basically, this tit-for-tat has gone on for some time. And now, in a, we're going to get revenge on you, haha, Samsung has decided to do the same to NVIDIA. So, as we're all aware... Any graphics card requires onboard memory to function, right? Well, Samsung, back in 2014, uh, in November 2014, decided to do the same thing. They decided to issue it, however, over memory chips. Unfortunately for Samsung, they didn't win this. Samsung asserted that now... NVIDIA are using its inventions in memory technology without its permission. NVIDIA are saying, no, we didn't. And it's 
kind of getting a bit ridiculous. It's a bit legal tit for tat, to be honest. Now, personally, and this is my personal feelings, it's not necessarily reflected in law. I wish it was. I wish my word was law. It would be a much better world. A simpler world. A less cruel world. Well, it would be less cruel for me, anyway. I personally hate this shit. Um... I could probably rage for about 45 hours on this subject, so I'll keep it brief. And I've mentioned it a couple of times previously anyway, but my personal thoughts on it is it's like... First of all, you get two companies, three companies, four companies, five companies in the same market. You are going to accidentally work or have the same ideas on the same problem. Because if you've got the same budget, you've got... The same goal, you've got roughly the same level of technical expertise in your company, and you've got the same constraints, for example, hardware limitations, power limitations, heat limitations, form factor, whatever the hell they are. Guess what? There are only so many ways to cook an egg. It's that simple. You can't decide to cook an egg by simply, you know, putting it in a vat of porridge which is cold it just doesn't work so in this case that's why you're starting to see so many different patent infringements and apple is suing samsung and samsung suing bob and bob suing you know sue over there and, and sue complaining at you know jimmy who happened to be you know bloody well wearing the same sunglasses as her it's getting a little bit ridiculous and this is why it starts to become really crazy because so many of these companies actually depend on one another as well like the amount of companies that are suing samsung but then samsung are either producing chips for them they're producing the screens for them they're producing the memory for them they're producing the plastic bubble wrap for them maybe i'm getting a little silly with this but you can kind of see where i'm going it just gets absolutely crazy i'm really hoping that nvidia do not get these patents um basically i'm hoping it's all thrown out of court and some people have accused it as patent trolling others have said that they wouldn't go as far as to say it's patent trolling it's basically looking for another source of income and i'm kind of on the fence on this one but personally i just think it's silly um and i say this from the perspective as a customer and the perspective of someone who loves technology and wants to see innovation in the industry. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.